Welcome to Life on Purpose, and I'm your host, Carolyn K. McGraw, interviewing fabulous, fascinating entrepreneurs and how they found their passion and purpose. And today, I'm interviewing River Easter. You are a certified Life Master Consultant. Yes. You have four books out. Yes. And you have a master's degree in organization development. Yeah, and behavior, transformational change, change management. Most people know it by that. Okay. And you also have an integrative holistic approach using neuroscience. Mm -hmm. And you're a speaker, author, coach. Mm -hmm. And you've been doing that for 20 years? I have been in... In, yeah, I've been in this space for a very long time. Uh, basically, since doing facilitation and coaching since 93. River, something unique about you. Oh. Oh, my. Uh, is this three truths and yeah, <laughs> three yeah. truths? That's always fun. Uh, well, one thing that's unique about me is that I uh, grew up working on cars. My dad was actually a rocket scientist, uh, but he also <laughs> did a uh, diesel mechanic. He was kind of that, I'm from the Pacific Northwest, jack of all trades. And I wanted to get, I wanted to get out of the place where I grew up, which was, or when I was a teenager and it was out in the middle of nowhere, I needed a car and so I started to work on cars and that way I could actually bond and hang out with my dad which was really neat Aww. to call. So I've rebuilt three engines. I've, That's amazing. Uh, I've done uh, you know way too many brake jobs and transmissions and clutches and everything and I love taking my car mm -hmm. in and getting it serviced uh -huh. <laughs> now. But what a handy skill to have. Yes, it is. It's very handy. So tell us about your business and what you do for people and kind of about your process. Okay, great. One of my, I think the, what, what I'm really passionate about is I really am passionate about people. I love people. I care about them and I can always see their genius in, mm. inside them. And I really want people to thrive because if we're all thriving, what an incredible world it will be. It will really raise the consciousness on the planet because so many of us are trying to fit in, to belong in places that really aren't our place. And it's painful. And we do it for all, you know, for a beautiful need, no judgment here, but it is, it becomes painful. And so that's where I come in. I have a process called the aligned life. It's clarity, focus, action. And that is when, when you're really clear on what it is that you would love, even if it's, I want to get clear on what I want to do. At least you're clear on that. Or you may be on the other end of the spectrum and you know exactly what you want, but you've been struggling and trying out different things and you're just not getting the traction that you want. And then the other uh, part of that is focusing. So focusing our thoughts and focusing our energy, our state of being, because a lot of times we're walking around really in fight or flight, and we don't even know it. We're so conditioned to being stressed out, to be worried, to be fearful, and that is really sabotaging us. We don't even know that this inner game here is really, we're our own worst enemies. We really need to win this inner game. I love when the inner game is the key to making your dreams and desires and your goals and, and reaching that success by doing that first. And that's what you're an expert on helping people with to notice the self-sabotage mm -hmm. and then you teach tools on how to overcome that. Yes. How do you do that? Yeah. Uh, it's actually a really simple process. First using mindfulness. Uh, I also want to say the last part of my process is action and notice just all of us have been in this space before 
when we are, you know, we're, it, it's like, it's, we're golden. I call it the golden. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like people show up, mm -hmm. uh, your problems are solved just miraculously. Oh, you're love just it. in this the flow. Yeah. You're in the flow. You're in this magical spot. And that's when you know that you're really aligned. You're aligned with your unique and essential self. And when you are aligned, it's like you get inspired actions and your actions that you do take are really, really effective. How many of us mm -hmm. are out there busy, 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 mm -hmm. you know, and we don't get anything done. Mm -hmm. And so that is really, you know, having this inspired action. So I use uh, mindfulness and neuroscience practices to help in one identifying when you are actually in a you know sabotaging yourself and then also a neuroscience practices to actually rewire that neural pathway tell us more about neuroscience and how you, it uses to rewire okay neuros there's all kinds of things one of those things there's a quote the where what you think you become, what you're imagining you create. Well, there's all kinds of science out there around using our imagination in a way that is creating what we would love. Most of us are actually using this incredible, powerful tool of our imagination against us because we're imagining all the what ifs and the oh my gods. Well, we actually, I teach people how they can actually use imagination to create what they would really love and to re, be rewiring our natural, well, not, it's our default. When I don't, I, I really believe it's not our natural way, but the default way mm -hmm. of thinking that we're taught to think and using imagination and then also using uh, mindfulness techniques to really notice what's going on in our body. So the combination is powerful it's that you're using. Very, very, it's a, it's a simple technique. It's not necessarily easy because mindfulness is awareness of our thoughts and our feelings without judgment. That's the tricky part, without judgment. <laughs> yeah. How do you do that? You have to shut that part off. Just be aware of it. And... Actually, it's not even really shutting it off. Uh, mindfulness is actually where you can go into and the, I call it the observer self, and you can actually watch yourself. Uh, say things to yourself that aren't very nice that you would never say to anybody else in the world but yourself right or you can watch yourself getting mad reacting in a way that is not consistent with who you think you know who you want to be like all of them I mean take kids for example right we all want to be these great empathetic parents or these strong parents and yet we'll do things that are like we don't want to do we'll react in a way well we're probably those reactions i love daniel siegel he's a neuroscientist he talks he calls them your emotional reactionary loops mm -hmm. we just right. get into these emotional reactionary mm -hmm. loops so you can you can watch yourself from this observer place and just watch but doing it without judgment it's the the awareness of what we're doing and not judging yourself for doing it noticing that i have a beautiful need for that and noticing that and then that is the opportunity and i help people unpack really help them unpack what those reactionary loops are about what they're getting triggered by and then creating a new decision, a new story, a, a new a ability. New story. Mm -hmm. And then the ab new ability comes out of yes. recognizing that story. Yes. So can you tell us about a success story of one of your clients, some of the results that, that they're getting? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I have this one client that came to me, and she 
literally could not get out of bed because she was beating herself up so much and uh, she it would cause her to feel exhausted to feel actually ill because there is a neurochemical response that's going on in your body and uh, and so she wanted she had a business that she really wanted to make money and she was in a fairly toxic environment an environment that didn't support her and working with me on getting that rewiring those her normal or her default mechanism of either beating herself up when she saw herself doing something or just really practicing also gratitude because mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to pivot but you can practice gratitude but really changing these criti self-critical thoughts and the behaviors that come out of them and she uh, found another business that she got on fire about that was had a really incredibly supportive network and community that she loved to be around and uh, she's she's on fire now. Well, that feels good. Yeah. To ignite someone, they're genius, as you said. Yeah. And you have to help her stop that self sabotage, mm -hmm. that judgment. Yes. And uh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing story. Yeah. Well, I want to jump into your chapter okay. in the secret sauce of downsizing, and your chapters on mindfulness and how to use that when you're going through a transition, yes. when you change that is very stressful and uh i've loved a couple things in there i want to i want to mention one one was a quote we mentioned a little bit but buddha this i love this quote what you think you become what you feel you attract what you imagine you create mm -hmm. so that goes into the mindfulness and being aware of your thoughts and, and neuroscience the neuroscience and the neuroscience okay. And you have a ninja tip. I love your ninja tips. And, now, and, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this one. And that was when you wake up in the morning to think about what you want to create, what you want to have happen, not about what you have to do. Yes. The kind dread. Of, oh, my yes. God. And most All people tests, wake up in right, dread. Right. And then you said, have a smile on your face and, you know, feel good about that. And that that is huge. If people can wake up like that feeling and do that first thing, mm -hmm. they'd have an awesome day. Yes. Yeah. And I really believe that, well, actually I had another client and the gratitude practice I have, it's called, I call it my powerful morning practice. And it has a, about three things that you do in the morning. And it really is only a 15 to 20 minute practice. It has completely changed her life. She's like around her she says, my mental landscape is so calm. I, I complain, I rarely complain. And her relationship with not only herself, right? When you're, you're complaining, there's a relationship uh, inconsistency here. But her relationship with her husband completely changed. It's much more peaceful and harmonious. And they're, you know, on each other's they're have each other's back and it's it mm. she is just and and she's doing not the business that she thought that she should be doing right we're all thinking oh i need to do this business she actually chose the business that really turned her on and brought her joy so she's she's on fire and thriving too beautiful <laughs> in this chapter you talk about You've moved about 27 times, was it? I, I know. I was thinking, well, why would I want to do this book? I was invited uh, by Marlena uh, to be in this book. And I was thinking, well, what? You know, when I started to write the chapter, why am I, why would I even be in this book? And then I realized, why? You have moved so much in your life is that I am a change agent, right? That's Love my, change agent. <laughs> yes. I am a change agent. I'm actually, and my new moniker is a, your catalyst for positive change. And I hate change. 
I, I really do. I, I, I don't like it. And that's why we, I, I, even my ripple effect consulting, my OD business, it's all around, uh, it's all around. Uh, my tag is small focus changes for far reaching results. Ooh, say that again. Small focus changes for far reaching results. That's some gold right there. Yeah. And it's really about leveraging. Mm. Where do we, you know, when people want to, uh, change, they feel like it's going to be way too disruptive in their life. Like they'll come to me and they'll like, you know, I'm afraid that I'm going to have to divorce my husband or I'm going to have to leave my, my wife in order to have my dream, or I'm going to, it's just going to be way too disruptive and, uh, working in systems. I'm a systems uh, thinker is that in quantum theory, I've done a lot of work in quantum theory and is that we can actually make really small changes that have this far reaching result. And change does not have to be disruptive. It's when we ignore those small little voices that are going on that are saying, you know what, this isn't really working for you. This isn't really working for you. This isn't working for you. But we ignore those voices. And then we're going to get the two by four. We're going to be yes. flung off that hamster wheel and it's not going to be pretty. And I'm here to say, you can actually gracefully walk off that hamster wheel with more ease and grace and freedom and really creating what you want. You, it doesn't have to be disruptive. Mm. So that's, yeah. So the clients that work with you, they get to make that transition and that change using those techniques to make, like with grace yeah. and ease yeah. that it doesn't have to turn your whole life upside down. Exactly. Change does not have to be a, this huge disruptive process and to create positive change in your life. And that is, you know, I'm here to help guide you through that. And so the moving mm -hmm. is disruptive, right? It's a, it's a big change, no matter how positive you might even think that it may be, there's uh, some parts of it that may be scary. And of course, when we're afraid, then we start doing all those things like procrastination and delay and talking ourselves out of and um, those and, and we get into our fight or flight mm -hmm. or freeze. Yeah. And fall apart. It, yeah. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fall apart. That's exactly right. Yeah. And, uh, and so if we, I just wanted to put in that we can actually do it mindfully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot in there. there. There's actually a lot of tips and practices that I put in the book to help you mindfully move through any kind of transition. So it's not just about mm -hmm. moving, right. but it's any right. kind of transition, even if it's in your mind, transitioning in your mind <laughs> to a new mindset. Yes. <laughs> and you talk about um, how you, all those moves and all the stuff from one place to another. Oh, God. And, and having to, you know, ch the challenge of the change for you. Yeah. And then letting go of those things. And you described like your ideal oasis that you wanted yes. to create. I'm like, I want that too. So yes. talk about how you you visualize what you wanted your new space to look like and yeah. feel like. Yeah. And, and it, I think this is great that you brought up this, you found this point mm -hmm. in the book to bring up because when I had moved, I, the, that got me to the place where I was moving back from, I, it was completely different because I was not implementing any of my practices into this, you know, the practices that I've really honed and, uh, and it, it made a huge difference in my life because the move before was so traumatizing and, but the move 
to where I had, I used and implemented these steps was so much easier, mm -hmm. even though there were bumps along the road. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's total bumps always. There's always going to be a bump along the road. We were going to move into a one house, I had it all figured out, and that whole thing fell apart. It, th that happened twice. The whole thing fell apart. And, uh, but still staying in that mindset of, well, there's got to be some good that comes out of this. But I really described my house as, I wanted an oasis. Mm -hmm. I, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. I mean, I wanted an oasis. I wanted to step into a place and just feel my body relax and go, ah. Oh. And I wanted that to be for my entire family. It was really important that my entire family felt that way. And I love nature, so I'm surrounded by nature. And we found the perfect place. We, I mean, it was, it's just beautiful. We're still there. We absolutely love it. But it, I really, you know, using these principles is, was made the, made the whole thing. And it was probably a six month process just made it so much more enjoyable. What's really important about what you said is that you focused on what you wanted to create, why you were going through this change and move and stress and stuff, because yeah. you were going to something bigger and better and more in align with who you are and, yes. and an environment that supports you. So when you are focusing on that, then it's easier to get through that transition. Yes. And it doesn't necessarily, I just want to point out, because we're talking about downsizing, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be bigger, right? It can actually, you know, be actually for a lot of people, they want to go smaller mm -hmm. for them. And that is going to be, but it's, it's, it's a way that you can really s start to use that imagination in and focusing on what it is that you would love than being on like, oh my God, what if this doesn't work out, mm -hmm. right? What if I can't find what I want? What if it's not out there? What if I have to settle and just, you know, going those, into fear. Yeah, yeah, going into fear and just letting, noticing when you are and then just letting that go. Visualizing ourselves, accomplishing what we want, how we want to feel. Mm -hmm. how, and so there's just, uh, you know, just such a powerful tool that I want everyone to be able to remember to use in their life. Right. And we're not taught that. Mm -hmm. It's we, We're not taught the power of vis visualization. Some people call it wishful thinking. Some people call it woo, but it is so not that. Athletes use it all the time. Jim Carrey, mm -hmm. how he, he used it to get paid. He, he is the first actor to be paid $10 million for a film. Ooh. And he used it for five years. His visualization mm -hmm. yeah. of him being paid the top, mm -hmm. top amount. Mm -hmm. wrote, wrote a check for $10 million. He didn't just write the check though for $10 million and just forget about it. There are practices that you need to do, the repetition, mm -hmm. the consistency, daily. The daily, daily. This is not about doing a whole lot of stuff. This is about having that repetition so that you're really tuning your body and mm -hmm. uh, changing the default way that you've been living to a new way and that's where it gets a little rote and also it's hard to see when you're in the frame it's hard to see what you're doing it's hard to see when you're sabotaging yourself yes. right it's yes. hard to see the things that other people can see and i'm really really good at identifying these mm -hmm. patterns mm -hmm. for people and helping them unpack them and putting in a new you know, a new decision, a new story, and coming up with the, the practice that they need to do. So when people, when your the clients come to you, they have that cloudy, they they're, and that sabotage is making it even cloudier, and you get that crystal clear of really what's underneath that mm -hmm. and how to release that. Yeah, I see the patterns, and then um, I, I love this term, it's called I facilitate insights. Mm. 
So I'm facilitating by asking questions and I also uh, knowing the different processes, um, how that, so I help them have that aha moment. Mm-hmm. All right, because I, I don't even know what that aha moment is going to be for them or what's really underneath. I just see the pattern above it, and then we can unpack that mm-hmm. and help ask them questions. Very empowering. Mm-hmm. You help them have those aha moments of really, this is what it is, and then you have the action steps of what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is awesome stuff here. It really is. A, it's people get on fire, they just they love it. And they, it's more doable, mm. right? At first, something seems like, ah, oh, it's so big, I'll never, ever be able to get my dream, so I'm just going to shut down, you know, and ask for something else. But then after, you know, just not even that long of working with me, they're like, ah, oh, I get it, I can do this. Mm-hmm. And like, life changes. They actually will even, <laughs> I had one guy, I said, did you, do you realize what you just experienced? said to me he just explained what he had wanted in his vision which he thought was impossible had happened within seven weeks seven miraculous weeks. It, it was it was really Go for beautiful. It. it's never going to happen to that quickly to have that breakthrough and transformation yeah to have it actually realized in his life there's one other awesome tip you have in your chapter on mindfulness and that is to write down what you're wanting to avoid to just get that on some paper and you know that was like a light bulb to me is like instead of pushing it down and ignoring it to write it down and to get the clarity of just writing down Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. fact Mm -hmm. there's something about writing Mm -hmm. and getting stuff out of your head that creates these neural synapses in your mind And when you make, you're making up in your mind, it's, it's way bigger in your mind. And it's also like a jumble. You can't sort it all out and writing it down is, and just getting it all out on the paper. And I love mind maps. I Mm -hmm. love them because you don't have to have any structure. You just throw everything on a piece of paper. And then I like to start drawing and, you know, putting, seeing all the linkages Because then I start seeing, you can start seeing the patterns in there. And then you can also see that a lot of the fears that you're afraid of are completely, they're they're not real. And that's, again, we're wired to survive. We're wired to stay in our comfort zone. And we just naturally, fear comes up when we're going outside of our comfort zone. And, and that's where the awesome and the magic happens <laughs> yeah. when you step out of that and you, you and you have first have to let recognize the sabotage, yeah. change the thinking, mm-hmm. and then have the courage to step out. Courage, yes. Courage. courage is a verb, definitely. And knowing that what your your mind is when it goes into a fear response, fight, flight, or freeze. It doesn't know the difference between uh, imagined fear and a real fear of stepping off a cliff. So if you think that you're going to have an emotional fear, right, you know, speakers, right, mm-hmm. Being, doing this interview, if I'm imagining, uh, you can, you, you, there is fear associated with being judged, laughed at. Uh, not measuring up, all of that. Well, your mind has the same response as if I was going to go bungee jumping or fall off a cliff. So you got to remember that, that fear is, it's going to be there. It's just how are you going to navigate it? And circumstances are going to be there. Mm -hmm. And and moving, there's always going to be circumstances and there's always going to be fear. So really helping you to navigate what I call the treacherous terrain, you know, of your mind and your life. Mm. (laughs) So you have other books out. Can we hear what the titles of your other books are? Oh, one is uh, Jumpstart Your Blank, and it's really 26 experts that talk about 
their area and mine is around uh, really aligning again, aligning your life and uh, the that process of clarity, focus, action. And there's a lot of great things in that book. And then I have another book that it, I really, really uh, loved being in in this process. It was 40 women over 40, their words of wisdom. Mm. And we, the format of the book is one where we all answered the same set of questions, but we all answered them completely differently. And it, and the women, amazing women from all different walks of life, but they, they're all parting their words of wisdom. And I really enjoyed that. I, I like to listen. I like to hear stories about people and and so that was nice mm -hmm. to see their perspective how they would so mm -hmm. it that's a really good book and yeah so you can find all those on amazon yes they can get 40 40 rules and the other one is jump start your blank all right i'm in that one too uh, <laughs> jump start your relationship <laughs> and so we're in the same book that's awesome. fun <laughs> Do you have an offer for our viewers watching today? I Yes, I, I do. I actually created a PDF for those of you who want to know more about mindfulness, more about how you can practice it and what are the you know actual components or qualities of it. I have a PDF and I also have a short uh, audio that you can listen to to practice mindfulness and that is at rivereaster.com forward slash mindfulness.